Hello everyone and welcome to a getting started guide for Botania. Today we'll be going over the different types of flowers, the pure daisy, how to generate mana, without further ado let's hop right into it. Botania introduces mystical flowers and shimmering shrooms. There are 16 different types, one corresponding with each color of dye. And they can be found throughout the world in different places. Let's go over the different types. The most common will be mystical flowers, which are one block tall, just like any normal flower. And they can be found anywhere that there can grass or normal flowers be found. So as you can see, there's a little brown section of brown flowers there. You see a green with an orange. You got a black section. I believe that's a light blue one. And many more around. Now the important thing about these are, is that after you collect them, if you put them in your crafting table, they will give you two flower petals. These flower petals will be important later on because they are used in a lot of different recipes for different blocks you can make, tools, and especially flowers that generate mana or that use mana. So tall flowers can be found throughout the world as well, though they are rarer. To collect them, you need shears. And if you put them in a crafting bench, they will give you four petals. Shimmering shrooms are different. These can be found in caves and only be found in caves. And these can't be broken in a crafting bench to make petals. One shroom equals one petal. So in any crafting recipe where I would mention you need a specific amount of petals, you can also use shimmering shrooms as substitutes. While you're out hunting for flowers collecting all the different types, they can take up some precious inventory space. To save room, you can craft the flower pouch. And to craft it, you need five wool, two on the left and two on the right, and one in the bottom center with any type of petal. My example, I use blue in the top middle, and then you will get your flower pouch. Now if I take this off the wall, and let's investigate it. By right clicking, you can see inside that there are spots for flowers. Each of these little flower spaces can hold up to one stack of flowers. So if I go to my special inventory here, let's take one pink, I'll take a stack of lime green, you know, let's take a few more pink. Take some blues, some greens, and let's go orange. So as you can see, each area can hold up a stack, and let's say I want some more orange. And I can't put in any, because they can only hold up to 64. This is useful for when you're out searching, or if you just want to store flowers in a place that's not chests. Now one of the downsides, as you can see, is that they can only hold the simple form of flowers. They can hold the tall versions or the mushrooms. Now that you have your petals and mushrooms, you can start creating advanced flowers. But to make them, you'll need what is possibly the most important item in this entire mod, the Petal Apothecary. To make it, you need three cobblestone across the bottom with one in the center, a petal or mushroom of any type in the top center, and two cobblestone slabs on either side of the petal. And this will give you your petal apothecary. To make any flower, you need to fill the petal apothecary with water, either by hand or automatically with pipes. Then you'll need to throw in any materials required for the flower you would like to make. When it is correct, you'll see the little UI showing the materials and the flowers. Then you throw in some seeds, and comes out the flowers you would like. If by chance you accidentally throw something incorrect, simply shift and right click the petal apothecary and the last item you put in will come out. So you can then throw in the correct material needed. The first flower you need to make is the pure daisy. To make it, simply take any combination of four white petals or mushrooms into your petal apothecary. Take your seeds, and now you have your pure daisy. After you place it on dirt or grass, 
what it does is it can turn one type of block into another without the use of mana. So if I take my, this stone and wood in my inventory, and for it to be used, you have to place it directly around the pure daisy. So, as you can see, I am placing it in the blocks around it. They will have this nice little particle effect, and it will turn one thing into another. So, in the major craft, so in the major recipes, is it will turn stone into living rock. It will change any log type into living wood, ice into packed ice, packed ice into blue ice, soul sand into sand, and netherrack into cobblestone, and a water source block into snow. So it is a useful block to have around if you want to turn nether items into normal items. But the most important things you'll be using for is living war is living rock and living wood because they will be used in a number of different types of Botania recipes. Living wood will be used in various crafting recipes, so I recommend making a lot of it. Some simple, more decorative ways you can use it is its standard form or you can make it into living wood slabs. You can make living wood stairs, living wood walls, and mossy living wood. All of these are cosmetic and you can use them around your base, for Britannia, or whatever use you would like. One of the more important recipes for the living wood is the living wood twig. This is Botania's version of a stick, though it is slightly more expensive to make than a normal stick. Just like any normal log, one piece of living wood can be turned into four living wood planks as you see, and this is what they look like. Those planks can be turned into slabs, stairs, fence gates, and fences. Again, these are all cosmetic, so use them as you wish. Living rock will be used in various crafting recipes, so I recommend making a lot of it. But some simple, more cosmetic ones consist of living rock slabs, stairs, and walls. You can also make living rock bricks, brick slabs, brick stairs, chiseled living rock bricks, cracked living rock bricks, and mossy living rock bricks. A lot of these are used maybe more cosmetically, but some of them do actually have uses in crafting recipes later down the line. To generate early mana, there are two types of flowers you can choose from. The first are the hydrangeas. To make them, you need to throw two blue petals and two cyan petals into a petal apothecary. They will create mana by consuming a water source block that is within a three block radius of the flower. They will slowly generate mana as compared to other flowers, but during rainstorms, they will operate quicker. The major downside to these flowers though, is that after three Minecraft days or one hour in real time, the flowers will wither away and die. Using them as a long-term goal for mana generation won't necessarily work because you have to keep remaking them. The other nice starter flower is the endo flame. To make it, you'll need to throw two brown petals, one red petal, and one light gray petal into a petal apothecary. These flowers will, gem will generate mana by dropping materials with a burn time in its vicinity, and it will generate mana only as long as the burn time for the item. The endoflame won't use any fuel that will leave a byproduct such as lava buckets, and they can hold up to four blocks of coal worth of mana at a time. Another one thing to note that is important about flowers is that you can't place them next to each other. Due to code in the game, 
You can't actually place them in just giant large flower areas. You must place the same times diagonally from each other as you can see here. Such as if I decide to put them here, 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 and here, they won't actually be as efficient as they can be. But if I get rid of all of these, each of them will work at peak efficiency. So keep that in mind no matter what flowers you make to generate mana, you can't place the same ones next to each other. But if I want to take maybe these hydrangeas and go like this, each of these will be working at peak efficiency. So again, keep that in mind as you make your mana producing flowers throughout this mod. One of the main tools you'll be using throughout this mod is the Wand of the Forest. To craft it, you'll need three living wood twigs placed diagonally and any two petals or mushrooms. The colors of the petals do not matter, but they will change the look of your wand, such as I've gone for a blue and yellow look. So this is what my wand looks like. This bottom, this bottom petal is the top left one, and this top one is this one. So if you have a color scheme you like, or want it to look specific, however is up to you, you can use any type of petals or mushrooms you would like, and it will change the appearance of your wand. To the actual function of this wand, there are two different types of modes it can be set to, bind and function. In function mode, one thing it will do is that will actually rotate blocks. For a quick example, I'll come over to my living rock stairs right here. If I hold shift and right click, it will rotate these stairs around. Or maybe, oops. And if, as you can see here, I have these slabs. I can't rotate them, so it will actually switch modes. If I come over here to this house, I can rotate even non-Botania objects such as these glass panes, this wood, and it will only rotate in a certain way, such as it won't rotate the tops of these logs to the sides. It will only spin it around. So if I go up to the stairs, I'll just, I'm sorry, actually, you know, I'm living in this house, so I'm kind of messing up my own home. Not the best, but it's good for an example. And there we go. So you can actually rotate any blocks you want with in the function mode. Now to go over the bind mode, I actually need to introduce you to mana spreaders and mana pools. Flowers can store the mana they generate, but you can't use it. To do that, you have to get it out of the flowers and into a place to store it. And that's what mana spreaders are for. To make mana spreaders, you need six living wood, three on the top and three on the bottom, any petal in the center, and a gold ingot to the left of the petal. And that will give you the ma mana spreader you see here. A few important things to note about these is if you place these after your flowers, you have to go into bind mode and link your flowers to your mana spreader. Also, is if you can see this little green line going across, it has a range for where it can actually distribute mana, which is 12 blocks. So keep that in mind as you place some of these around. Now you can go from flower to mana spreader to mana spreader to mana spreader all the way till you get to your desired mana pool. The only thing is that these mana spreaders can maybe store one, two shots worth of mana it can transfer. So if you have a large number of mana producing flowers or flowers that produce a lot of mana, you might want more than one mana spreader. To store all of your mana, you would need a mana pool. And to make this, you need five living rock in this little U shape. A mana spreader will take the mana from your flower and kind of shoot it like a laser into your mana pools. But enough of me talking about it, let me actually show you how it works. So as you can see, I have in front of me, I have my five endo flames, my mana spreader, and my mana pool. Now if I take my wand of the forest in bind mode, and I'll hover over my endo flames. You can see on part of my screen, there's a picture of a mana spreader and a red X. 
What that means is that these flowers aren't actually linked up to this mana spreader since I placed it after the flowers. If you have a mana spreader down and then place the flowers, they will automatically link, but it won't work the other way around. So to link these, I hold shift and right click the endoflame flower. You will then get this little colorful border around it. All I have to do is go to my mana spreader and then right click it and then shift, right click again, and now they're linked. I'll do this for all of the flowers, and now they're all linked to here. But now I reached another issue. The mana spreader is facing straight up, and my mana pool is over there. By shift right clicking with the mana, with the wand of the forest on a mana spreader, you get the same order. And then by shift right clicking on my mana pool, it moves and now it is aimed. So if I take my coal here and just throw a bunch of it down, you'll see the flowers consume it. You can hear them consume it. And that is mana being transferred. Ah, look at that. Beautiful mana. And since they will do that, they will then consume the coal. If I take my wand of the forest, I can see that my mana spreader is filling up. And you can see that even though I put a bunch of coal down, these flowers aren't even that filled. Because they are quickly transferring it to my mana spreader, which is shooting it towards my mana pool. The last thing we'll go over is one of the simple items you can make with mana. And that is simply if you can turn iron into mana steel. By holding it in your hand and then dropping it into the mana pool. And now I have mana steel. This can be used for a number of different items and it will be used for different recipes. There's a lot of items you can throw in your mana pool and turn into different forms, but I'll go over them in later videos as they are needed. Now you have all you need to start your journey through Botania. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you again for watching and have a good day. Bye.